Good afternoon and a warm welcome for 68th AICUG TV and I am privileged to have with me one of the senior most distinguished faculty in the field of obstetrics and gynecology and doc- that is Dr. Usha Krishna ma'am thank you very much for your kind acceptance to be here we are really feeling very fortunate to have you here ma'am for this thank interview you, sir. Uh, madam is the past president of foxy and mox and fga she is currently a consultant at bridge candy and bhatia hospital she is a chairman of icmr in reproductive health and she is a honorary ex honorary professor uh, from uh, km hospital in mumbai uh ma'am uh, would you like to share something about uh, foxy and you are the senior most and uh, your decades well, of I practice was president of foxy far back in 1993 and uh, we are now advanced very much following me number of excellent residents came excellent enthusiasm has grown but i was fortunate i could start foxy focus i started traveling seminars where our good speakers could go from place to place in smaller towns and have small seminars considering the local people very important the local doctors very important and we had excellent people like dr mehru and sotia and dr Uh, Feroz Apari can Malhotra and all speaking in various places, and they travel from place to place. We also had the first international conference on pregnancy at risk. After which we had our first book of Fumsi called Pregnancy at Risk, where some of my very clever students and juniors helped. Now they have become very good gynecologists, like. Durusha, Vinita Salvi, Dr. Nozer Sheryar, and I'm very lucky that these were my colleagues in writing this book. And fortunately, all through, I've emphasized on good academic work. There have been excellent Foxy Focus after that. Very good programs. The students, the younger people, also present. beautiful slides work very hard and i am very satisfied with the growth of foxy i think it is a great thing that foxy has done well that's a significant contribution that you have given to the field of obstetrics and gynecology and for the betterment of the women's health in india ma'am thank you so much for sharing uh, would we would like to have your views uh, on the current status of the perinatal outcome ma'am i mean you have the decades of experience uh, so what is that a uh, shift in the perinatal outcome status in today's your practice <coughs> today we have more equipment uh, for example you have got fetal monitoring and you have got ultrasound and you have got doppler blood flow which are all useful but if you take the whole country as a whole the problem is more that patients the women in small towns and villages are not getting regular antenatal care they are not followed up till their delivery they are anemic their blood pressures are not recorded so a total health care is very important first if you want to improve perinatal outcome mm-hmm. and frankly there are proper studies done here and in europe and in asian uh, african regions where they have said that whenever the women had to be from lower socio economic class when they had poor hygiene poor education poor care then the perinatal loss was higher and it is found that even now the prematurity which takes the highest toll of perinatal mortality that has not decreased but to some extent it is increased for two reasons one that because of assisted reproductive technology more twins are born and twins have higher perinatal loss then there are more induction of labor done more cesarean done and to some extent that increases the prematurity 
it's also because of higher age of marriage older women conceiving that there is increased prematurity plus there is more either from doctor's point of view or from patient's point of view the incidence of induction of labor and cesarean is increased so that is one then the current scenario of perinatology we must emphasize on prevention of anemia to a great extent we must emphasize on early detection of blood pressure and timely treatment we must teach women that what are the early signs of premature labor like extra discharge or like tightening of uterus or any possibility where we have taught them what is the initial premature contraction so then the patient could be treated early and timely management and timely detection first and then timely management is the crux of prevention of prematurity There are 15 million women having premature babies every year, and India is one of those with very high prematurity, and therefore that is one. Then big toll on our society because of the right. increasing prematurity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then of course, when you take full care of patients, you have to prevent vaginal infection, total infection in a woman. If there is chorioamnionitis, you will get pre premature rupture of membranes, mm -hmm. and that will also cause prematurity when you can hardly stop. Then there is cervical dilatation, chorioamnionitis, and delivery. So, of course, with great importance of having drugs, tocolytic drugs, and as you know, for years we have had endomethazine, magnesium sulfate. Duodenum and Ritodrin, that is isoxaprine yes. and Ritodrin, and now there is a greater emphasis on drugs like to 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 be so. Atosibon. Atosibon. And Atosibon is very expensive. You have to start with a small dose of six point five to five, and then increase it to thirty seven, and it has to be given intravenously. It has to be given. For twenty-four hours, very often the idea of stopping premature labor is to get time to give corticosteroids, so that the baby's lungs can get mature, and there is less chance of respiratory distress syndrome. Absolutely. So all efforts are going. Similarly, nitric oxide definitely worked, and nitroglycerin patches. We have tried. We have had a study of seventy-two patients, and fifty of them we could prolong beyond thirty-five weeks. Mm -hmm. Similarly, and the average time of extension was twenty-seven days. Mm -hmm. Similarly, low-dose aspirin we tried mm -hmm. for in nine centers. It was a multicentric Foxy trial mm -hmm. during my Foxy presidency, and we could. Prevent prematurity. The need for induction was less. The control of hypertension was little better, and therefore that did reduce prematurity to some extent. Now we also there are studies where if you give magnesium sulfate to the mother, the chances of the child getting better neuro protection, less chances of cerebral palsy. Will be there, so there are continuous studies, and there are a lot of organization from UNICEF to WHO to Bill Gates and many more, which are working on prevention of premature. Right. So, so uh, as far as possible, one should prevent it, and prevent if we are not it. able to do it, then, then rational it. use of the various yes. drugs, and as far as treatment is concerned, I think pediatrician have improved their. Ability and the work tremendously, so they are able to keep even twenty-six baby weeks may be alive. So now, of course, higher the gestation period, greater the chance chances of, of survival. survival. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
in some advanced countries they have been able to save 25 26 week baby yeah. to as high as 20 weeks survival rate that's really incredible that we have in with the current technological advancement we can so uh, we safeguard need most of the in lives short what i need is both simultaneous effort of improvement of socio economic status improvement of reaching our antenatal care we and improvement of the technology right. ability to give technology and i think that would be one of my last messages take home message will be that we have to simultaneously work for social factors which should improve and medical factors where we care more for the patient the clinical diagnosis is better as well as offer technical help too thank you thank very you. much ma'am thank you so much for being here with us thank it you it was very nice talking to you thank you